In this video, we're going to talk about some cautions of significance for hypothesis testing. So in example 212, we have Ashley and Chelsea who are two statistics students. They're both working on the same problem for their homework. Ashley chooses an advanced to use a significance level of 0.05 and Chelsea chooses to use 0.10. Now this is perfectly okay. There's nothing that sets your significance levels. You are allowed to choose what you want. It's just depending on kind of like how sure you want to be. The question is whether the mean cholesterol level among sedentary female students is different from 168 milligrams. Both significance levels are valid choices. The p-value for the problem is 0.0750. So let's look at number one. Does Ashley reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So Ashley has a p-value of 0.0750. Well, both of them do because it's the same homework, same data set. And this p-value is blank, then alpha equals, let's see, Ashley's using 0.05 equals 0.05. So you always set up, let's compare the p-value to alpha. So her p-value 0.075 is bigger than alpha equals 0.05. So this one is bigger. Anytime you get a big p-value, you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, number two, does Chelsea reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So Chelsea had a p-value of 0.0750, because they both have the same data, so they get the same data, the same p-values, is blank, then, but Chelsea used alpha equals 0.10. So then her p-value is smaller than alpha. And so because it's small, we will reject the null hypothesis. So notice then that Ashley's failing to reject and Chelsea's rejecting, so they're getting different conclusions. But they both have the same p-value, and that means they have the same amount of evidence against the null. So why can they have different conclusions? Well, because they had different significance levels. And sometimes that happens. Two different researchers might choose different significance levels, and they're going to get different results. Okay, so our little blurb here is the level of significance alpha, remember, tells you how much evidence you will require to reject the null hypothesis. So Ashley said in advance she was using a smaller alpha, so she was going to require stronger evidence to reject the null, and she just didn't have enough evidence to do it. <coughs> now the p-value <coughs> tells you how much evidence you actually found against the null. So instead of how much evidence you're going to require, it's how much you actually find. So we like p-values a lot. P-values tell us more than simply whether or not you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that's why now the research community is moving towards everyone needs to report a p-value every time because it gives you more information. So our next situation, we have two separate scientists conducted a study to determine if a new diet helps reduce weight. They both chose a significance level of 0.05. Now George found a p-value of 0.0503. Should he reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis that diet does not help reduce weight? So they both used alpha equals 0.05, so this p-value is a big p-value. It's bigger than 0.05. And so he will fail to reject the null. But Dan found a p-value of 0.0498. So these are just two separate scientists. They're each doing their own study. They each have different data. So this, 0.0498, is smaller than 0.05, so this is a small p-value. And he gets to reject the null. And so, yes, they came to diff different conclusions. George is going to say he can't find, or he doesn't have enough evidence to say that diet helps reduce weight. But Dan's going to say, yes, I found evidence that diet helps reduce weight. And so what kind of happened here? Let's see, remember our small p-value indicates strong evidence against the null hypothesis. How does the strength of the evidence compare for the two scientists? So their p-values are 0 0.0503 and 0 0.0498. Those are almost identical, right? So their strength of evidence against the null is almost the same for the two experiments. 
So in this one we see an example of how there's no sharp border between like significant and not significant results, just increasingly strong evidence as the p-value decreases. So we did have to set a rule and we say, okay, if it's smaller than alpha, we reject. But practically, does it make a difference if we have these two p-values? No. And so you should keep in mind if you have p-values really close to your alpha, then it might not be a... Well, if you get a p-value that's just bigger than alpha, you should probably still go ahead and report it and say, like, it's really close to alpha. But I realize, and so I realize that still tells me something. Let's see, so Jillian also conducted a weight loss study for a diet she created. She wants to know if the participants will lose weight. On her diet, she measured the average weight loss of her participants over six months. The null hypothesis is that on average there is no weight loss. Okay. Um, Jillian found that her sample of 30 people lost an average of 0.3 pounds over six months. She conducted a hypothesis test and found a p-value of 0. 0.0000031. So that's a really, really small p-value. She rejects the null hypothesis and concludes that she has extremely strong evidence that the participants for her diet lose weight. Extremely, extremely, extremely strong evidence. That's a really small p-value. So, are her results statistically significant? Yes, because we got a small, very, very small p-value. So that means statistically significant. So we are very... very sure they lost weight. So now we know that our results were statistically significant, meaning that we're sure, that we're not uh, positive, but we're fairly sure that these people lost weight, that the average weight went down. But now we want to know, are her results practically significant? So practically significant means, would it make a difference in real life? Would it actually matter to a person? Now, so for that, let's go back up and see, well, how much did they actually lose? They lost an average of 0.3 pounds over six months. Now, can you imagine only losing 0.3 pounds over six months? Is that worth it? I would say probably not. I don't want a diet to only lose 0.3 pounds in six months. Okay. So I would say no, not practically significant because we only lost an average of 0.3 pounds over six months. So no one really cares. So just keep in mind from this one that statistical significance is different from practical significance. And our final example here, John and Matt have never met or talked. Coincidentally, they both conducted a study to see if the mean breaking strength of a new material is less than 40 pounds. Now let's assume the population standard deviation is 0.3 pounds. John took a sample size of 30 bags and found a sample mean of 39.95. Amazingly enough, Matt also found a sample mean of 39.95. Obviously, this is a contrived example. But he used a sample size of 1,000 bags. So basically, if you look through here, we want to keep everything exactly the same. All we're changing is the sample size. So we have John and Matt, sample mean, standard deviation, exactly the same. But we changed the sample size. So now you can see here where I came through and found the test statistic. So John's test statistic is negative 0.91. Matt's is negative 5.27. That's a big difference, right? And then when you go through and you find your p-value, this p-value is 0.18. And this p-value is 0 0.00000682. That's a huge difference in our p-values. Okay, and now let's see what the conclusions are. So John has a p-value 0.18. That would be a big p-value. And because it's a big p-value, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now Matt, though, he got a tiny, tiny p-value, very small p-value. And he will certainly reject the null hypothesis. And is it statistically significant? Statistically significant again means you have a small p-value. So this one would be no, and this one would be yes. So we'll just make ourselves a little note that 
um, even very, very small differences. So it was from 40 pounds to 39.95. So we were only off 0.05 pounds. Very small differences can be very significant. You have a very small p-value if you have a large enough sample size. So the bigger sample size, the smaller the p-value will always be.